The What a Weird Week show. Mosquitoes invade the flying tubes. Friday, October 20th, 2023. Hi, everybody. It's weird. This is like crazy being here. Like really weird, weird tale. Well, I got a great show for you today. It's a wonderful weird stuff. Hi, friends. I'm Scott, and this is What a Weird Week, a show about the weird stuff from this week's news. For links, videos, stuff like that, go shownotes.page, shownotes.page. Dot page. All right, here's the Weird News Top 10 for Season 4, Episode 56, first published Friday, October 20th, 2023. 10. Number 10 this week is Space Probe that may destroy the global economy has successful launch. We talked about this potential mission before, but now it's begun. NASA launched NASA. Why did I pronounce it NASA? Well, let's not cut that out because, heaven forbid, you think I'm perfect. Hey! NASA launched a billion-dollar space probe the other day. Its six-year mission is to get to the 16 Psyche asteroid and double-check it contains enough precious metals to ruin the global economy. I'm pretty sure that's the mission. That's not their official mission, but the asteroid might be so valuable because of the rare metals it's made of, whoever owns this asteroid would become our wealthy overlord. There's talk in the article about how exciting it'll be to learn how planetary cores are formed and stuff like that. But... Come on. It's made of precious metals, they think. I'm pretty sure that's still a driver in this mission, but I have no way to confirm that. But if it was like, we could go to this asteroid that's a rock or this asteroid that may be made of diamonds and rubies, and they decide, you know, unanimous, let's go to the diamonds and rubies asteroid, well, I'm a little suspicious that it's just about the science at that point. Sorry, science. Isn't it good to be skeptical, though? Here's a couple of things about this asteroid. 16 Psyche was discovered in 1852. It's shaped roughly like a potato. And because of the metal it's made of, they estimated the value to be as high as 10 quintillion dollars. Now the experts are walking the money part back, kind of, like it still might be worth that much money, but experts are saying they could never bring an asteroid back to Earth. Even if we did have the technology, it would flood the precious metals market and instantly render all precious metal worthless, essentially destroying the world economy. So we won't do that. Kind of the gist of what the scientists are saying. I don't mean to sound jaded, but 10 quintillion dollars, no matter how true to the science you are and all you want to do is pursue the truth, find out stuff, and just do the science all the time with the sciencing. I feel like 10 quintillion dollars, the temptation of 10 quintillion dollars might have the potential to corrupt somebody. You got to figure somewhere in the world, somebody is working on a how do we get the asteroid back to Earth scenario. I don't know. Nine. Just before we launch into number nine, warning, it involves AI. If you find that stuff terrifying, it's a lot of terrifying headlines about AI. I feel like I have this theory that AI gets editors excited. You see it a lot in headlines. They could be talking about Grammarly or autocorrect or RoboCop. AI can mean almost anything at this point. This, I think, is a nice story. University student wins $40,000 prize using AI to figure out a little piece of history, a very, very little piece of history. A student named Luke won a contest by deciphering a small portion of a 2,000-year-old scroll. Luke is the first person to succeed at the Vesuvius Challenge. That's a competition where people are encouraged to use modern tech to figure out what these ancient scrolls say. These scrolls fossilized after Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79. So last week, the folks at the Vesuvius Challenge announced 21-year-old Luke, a computer science major, won $40,000 for figuring out 10 characters in a tiny little section of the scroll. I got to admit, I ain't had much learning there. And when I heard 10 characters, come on, I need more characters. Then I looked at the photo of the scroll. And if you don't have a chance to check out the photo, we'll put it in the show notes. But just picture a piece of charcoal that's kind of in the shape of a scroll. It's a shriveled up charcoal scroll. It's all rolled up. They can't unroll it and read it. They're using AI algorithms And their smart brains and, of course, the motivation of money. Anyway, all of that combined, the miracle of AI and uh, the motivation of money and smart human brains, and they're figuring out what these ancient scrolls say. 
It's kind of fascinating. The top 10 weird news stories of the week. What a weird week. Eight. And number eight, mosquitoes in our flying tubes. Published late last week in the New York Post, an article about how a bunch of mosquitoes delayed a Mexican flight for several hours. The swarm of mosquitoes is described as biblical. They couldn't take off from Guadalajara until the swarm of lousy stinking mosquitoes was taken care of. Maybe you saw the videos in your feed, the flight crew members like spraying the cabin with, I'm going to assume it was no Skeeto, but uh, if that's not a brand, it should be copyright, copyright 2023, Weird Week Enterprises. I feel like you'd have to be there to really answer this question, but would you rather have a flight that's several hours late departing or an on-time flight infested with mosquitoes? That's a tough, that's like a Sophie's choice. Tuffy. Seven. Okay, here's number seven. HuffPost headline was pretty great, so we'll just quote it. Georgia man stunned by $1.4 million speeding ticket. Who wouldn't be stunned by that much of a fine for speeding? Like, how fast would you need to go before you weren't stunned anymore? How fast were you driving if they pull you over and they give you a ticket for $1.4 million and you're like, eh, seems fair. I figured it was somewhere around a million dollar fine. You got me, officer. Maybe if you were in a rocket car or an actual rocket, maybe if you took a rocket through a school zone, you got pulled over for speeding, maybe then you'd be like, okay, $1.4 million fine seems fair. But how would they even catch you in your rocket? They would also need a rocket. In this scenario, well, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Let's move on. This was obviously a typo. A fellow in Georgia, United States of America, got pulled over for doing 90 in a 55 zone. Speeder gets his $1.4 million e-citation. He calls the court because, like the HuffPost headline said, he was stunned. And the speeder was told, look, either pay the fine or show up to court. That's me paraphrasing. Turns out that if you go to court for something like this in Savannah, Georgia, the judge decides what your actual fine will be. And it can't be more than $1,000. Still a lot of money, but, you know, not a million dollars. So the question is, do you think they automatically issue the million dollar fine so people will be like, pay a thousand instead of a million? Okay. Or maybe they're hoping some rich people will just pay the million. (laughs) If you pull over the right person and they're like, "Eh, it's a drop in the bucket. I'll pay it. I don't want the hassle. It's two million. Anyway, officials say the e-citation software was the problem. It just generates $1.4 million as a placeholder. And that was never the actual fine. Again, that's me sort of paraphrasing. Weird. Weirder. Weirdest. This is the What a Weird Week show. Six. Number six in our weird countdown is the new world record for cereal box dominoes. If you wanted to beat the record for knocking over cereal boxes, you'd need to beat 12,952 cereal boxes. Fantastic. It was for charity. The old record, we covered this uh, before in a podcast. The old record was uh, 6,000 and something. This again for charity. Usually you hear about cereal box dominoes because food is being collected to help people who don't get enough to eat. And that was the case here. The charity Move for Hunger had their Topple Hunger Challenge. This was at the Henry Ford Detroit Pistons Performance Center in Michigan. They tried for a cool 15,000 boxes, but seemingly not every box went over. The final tally was just under 13,000. That is enough for a new world record. A little bit more on this story. In the photos, I see a lot of Frosted Flakes. And also the Flakes spokesmodel, Tony the Tiger. It's nice to see that he found the time to be there in between appearing in commercials and encouraging children to include Frosted Flakes as part of their complete breakfast. Also ski jumping. I think there was some ski jumping advice in one of their commercials. I don't know, Tony. You could do it. That's 
me paraphrasing, maybe that was my audition tape for maybe I'm the next Tony the Tiger. You can ski jump. You're crazy. Did I get the line wrong? Oh, darn it. Blew my audition. Let's be out on that note. Five. Number five, rubber ducks. Why? And how much? The Guinness folks posted an article about Charlotte Lee the other day. From the article, quote, Charlotte Lee and her rubber ducks have waddled their way into the record books with over 5,631 rubber ducks to her name and counting. The Seattle, Washington, USA native has achieved the record title for the largest collection of rubber ducks. I don't know if it's like this where you live, but around here, you'll see rubber ducks every day on car dashboards, in the back window of a car, in the office kitchen. It was a slow invasion that I didn't really notice, but now you look around, the rubber duck invasion has happened. Charlotte is 54 years old now. She got her first duck in 1996 to decorate the bathroom a little bit, and then it was a slow invasion. Get a couple here, get a couple there. I imagine Charlotte's friends saw what was happening, and you know how it goes. The rubber duck becomes an easy gift to give Charlotte for every occasion, and now, kablammy, 5,600 and something rubber ducks. Charlotte, it's the duck queen. If you don't have time for photos, we do have some in the show notes. Charlotte has a room that is full of ducks in display cases or on shelves. And she also poses with a bunch of ducks in the bathroom. It's great. It's ducks. And I saved you a click. Welcome back to What a Weird Week. Let's get back into the weird news countdown. Four. Bungee jumping world record has its ups and downs. Thanks, Dad, for that headline. A fella named Mike, who is from New Zealand, has set the unofficial world record for the most bungee jumps in a day. How many? 941 bungee jumps in a day. He did this for charity. It still has to be stamped by the Guinness World Records, folks, but that seems like a formality. He set the record earlier this month on the Auckland Harbor Bridge, and he live-streamed it. If you ever wondered what 940-something bungee jumps in a day does to you, Mike told reporters that he felt kind of seasick for a while. He raised thousands for the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand. If you'd like to help that charity, I'll put a link in the show notes. Three. Number three in our top ten weird countdown is new world record for solving the Rubik's Cube. Wait, before you fast forward, I know we've had a few of these records. Solving the Rubik's Cube before crashing into the Earth at terminal velocity. A fella broke a skydiving Rubik's Cube world record. And I got thinking, if they rigged it up so that your chute only opened if you solved the Rubik's Cube, now that would amp up the drama. That would incentivize the process, I think. Also, pretty good plot device for the next Saw movie. Somebody write that down. That's one for Blumhouse. I'm pretty, that's a Blumhouse movie waiting to happen. In a world where you're plummeting to your death, and the only thing that can save you is the Rubik's Cube. Coming soon from Blumhouse Pictures in association with Weird Week Productions. Terminal. 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 Cubelocity. Hey, that's a pretty good name. Terminal Cubelocity. Sorry, here's the record. 17-year-old kid. 17-year-old kid did this. His name is Sam. He's from Australia. He set the Guinness record for fastest time solving a rotating puzzle cube in free fall. How fast? 28 seconds and something while falling at around 200 kilometers per hour, according to the article. Sam says it's hard to focus on solving the cube while you're plummeting to Earth. That's just a a tip if you were thinking about perhaps going for this record. Oh, one thing I wanted to know, they none of the articles mentioned if Sam had a spare cube. Like, what if you're going for the world record and you drop your cube? First of all, look out below. But secondly, it'd be nice if you had a spare cube to solve at 14,000 feet or whatever. When weird happens, we say yay, because then we have something to talk about. This is the What a Weird Week show. 
two. Number two from Live Science. Here's the headline. Horrifying parasitic wasp with a giant head is one of more than 100 newfound species discovered in the Amazon. So this was discovered in the rainforest of Peru. How giant is the head of this horrifying wasp? I don't know. I mean, I have to trust the scientists on this, but we've all seen those murder hornets. So maybe I'm desensitized. This new big head wasp can get to about 0.7 of an inch. That's 1.7 centimeters if you're metric. That's how. That's not the head. That's the whole wasp. The length of the wasp. I mean, they're still horrifying because they do what parasites do. They kill the heck out of the bugs that they eat. Like, they just... I mean, it's almost overkill, you guys. The details are like a horror movie. The photo in the story looks to me like this new wasp has a head that is in proportion to its body. I just don't see the giant head aspect. So the headline from Live Science, I don't know. I mean, everybody's in the headlines game. You got to get those clicks. I'm not sure. Last week recap. We revisit what happened last week on the show. The top 10 from last week. Episode is still online. If you want to check it out, go show notes.page. Number 10 was if that chair could talk, it's probably seen a lot of rear ends. Number nine was teenager makes news. Success is built on a house of cards. Number eight was mushy chestnuts linked to scandal. I believe I pronounced it mushy chestnuts last week. But anyway, these chestnuts were linked to a scandal in the world championship of Conkers, which is a chestnut smashing game. Number seven was the story about Harry Dick Road, a road named after a fellow, and the sign keeps getting stolen. Number six was a great day for salted meats and cheese, that world record, the charcuterie world record. Number five was the grade four kids who watched Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey by mistake in school, and the school offered counseling. Number four, warning. PG-13, earmuffs for the kids. Crocodiles doing it. Number three was the guy who worked at the museum and decided to act out some sort of heist movie. Bought a Rolls Royce after stealing a painting and replacing it. Number two, Chucky doll placed in handcuffs and arrested for maybe robbery. Number one was Big Pumpkin makes news ahead of Halloween. How big is the biggest pumpkin in the world? 2,749 pounds. The more I thought about that, our number one story last week... The more it blew my mind, you guys. That's just a gargantuan pumpkin. Okay, we got to get to number one. It's all about what's weird in the news this week. This is the What a Weird Week show. Honorable, Honorable mention. 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 Just before number one, the headline from the New York Post is, Woman ate 48 oysters on a date. What happened next was shocking. And then, of course, you know, we talk about the headlines game. It wasn't that shocking. I mean, if you had to guess what happened next, what? You're probably thinking of a few different possibilities. Stomach trouble? Well, that didn't happen. Some sort of aphrodisiac-related experience? Also, that didn't happen. Maybe she had a bad date? Yes, that's the one. It was. It was the bad date, you guys. She met a guy for drinks at this oyster bar, and she decided to try the oysters, and they were so good that she ordered more and more and more. And she ended up having 48 oysters because they were so darn good. Her date got up to go to the washroom, and when he came back... Just kidding. He didn't come back. He left. He took off because as far as he was concerned, they were going out for drinks, not a hundred and something dollars worth of oysters. So all this got posted to TikTok. The oyster restaurant does confirm the story. The guy eventually did offer to pay for the drinks, but not the oysters. One. All right. Here's the top dog. Number one story of the week. Lady accused of stealing car from dealership to get to her exotic dancing job interview. This according to police. The lady allegedly stole a Kia from a dealership in Indiana and drove that stolen car to a job interview. It was an exotic dancer job interview that she needed to get to. Seems like it was the old take it for a test drive and just don't bring it back situation. Interesting twist is when she was done with the car, allegedly, 
She left it in a mall parking lot beside the dealership. The keys were still inside it, and it was stolen by somebody else. It was a double steal. And the second person did not have an exotic dancer background, as near as we can tell. I'm not sure if they've been. You know what? I'm going to have to do some more research in that aspect. I mean, we just don't know enough about the exotic dancing background of the second car thief. Back to the story. An arrest has been made, but no court stuff yet. So to be continued. And I can't find anywhere information about whether she got the dance gig. That's what we all want to know. Did she get the gig? That might make a difference to the judge, too. I mean, if you're chasing, if you're so passionate, you're chasing your dream of being a dancer and you borrow. I just borrowed the car, Your Honor, because I was chasing my dream. You get there just in time for the audition and you dance so exotically that the entire dance company gives you a standing ovation and you're hired as the lead role for some kind of exotic guys and dolls revival or rent, exotic rent. In my brain, there's got to be a world where it's not just exotic dancing, but it's not also Broadway, it's like a combination. Exotic rent. Exotic cats. I mean, that was, some would argue, already exotic. Anyway, moving on. I'm not a Broadway show critic. I guess we should wrap up there. That is the What a Weird Week show. For show notes and more, go to shownotes.page. Shownotes.page. A big thanks to you, friends, on the stream. Every weekend, we're one of the things you can hear on Funhouse Radio. Ask your smart speaker to play Funhouse Radio, or you can see the link on our show notes page. I'll see you next Friday for another countdown of weird news on... What a weird week. I don't know. I was going to, what, do some kind of weird voice or something. Let's. I'll just say the name of the show. What a weird week. What a weird week. Like Tony the Tiger, maybe. I should have done the Tony the Tiger.